Paul Rogers had this this lovely analogy that I that I've always enjoyed that when you are um, working with a client and his whole big thing is is empathy. What empathy means is that you become a, an ongoing guest in the person's house, in the person's inner home, and you notice all these things about the house very respectfully. You notice the shelves and what there's on the shelves and the pictures, and you you notice the leak in the ceiling and feel what it must be like to live with that leak right over the kitchen table. And he's distinguishing empathy from identification. He says that when you start calling the plumber, then you crossed over from empathy into identification. And that isn't helpful. You're no longer a respectful guest in the person's house. You you begin to think it's your house. <laughs> so um, I, I love that analogy for so many reasons, but one, because it's an analogy about a house. You're making a relational home with the person, but the person gets to choose to the person's, uh, what the person is after in the house for Carl Rogers is what's important, not what the therapist wants. And then in those days, in the days of Carl Rogers, it was sharply distinguished from the psychoanalytic world where um, it was what the society wants, what the therapist, the analyst as as a representative of the society wants. So what happens in therapy is that uh, uh, I think it's more like the client becomes a guest in the analyst's home and the analyst says, no, 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 we, we're not gonna put the table over there. We're gonna put it here. This is the normal way to be. That's a pathological way to be or something like that. So Carl Rogers was very much um, making a, a new paradigm by uh, wanting the individual, the person to be uh, the center. And he called that client-centered therapy or person-centered therapy. And it was a time when um, understanding and valuing the uh, and giving power to the individual and what's happening for the individual, the distinctness of the individual was so important in making a completely new age. Jean was uh, Carl's client and talks very openly about his therapy with Carl Rogers and, and how helpful. And uh, Jean felt that, uh, that Carl's way of doing therapy was um, what can I, what can I say? pointed in a direction that opened everything up for him. But Jean came at it as a philosopher. And he, uh, in, in his growing uh, professional identity, added this incredible, vast philosophical underpinning to Carl Rogers' work. Carl was not a philosophical person. He didn't think that way. He was, Carl Rogers was, was uh, he, he was very concerned about a way of being with people. And Jean loved that. But then Jean wanted to, to sort of 
look at what can we learn about that way of being? What is that way of being? What do we mean by that? Philosophy is a whole other way of talking, of thinking, of being. And Jean brought that richness to Carl Rogers' work. And uh, Jean's philosophy um, incorporates Rogers' work, but goes very much further in many ways, um, thinking at the edge of so many uh, strands of uh, of Jean's work sort of incorporates, but then carries forward Carl Rogers' ideas. Carl Rogers would say, yes, there are many layers of empathy, but uh, Jean Gemlin would, would say, well, what do we mean by layers? And, and how, could the, how could we articulate uh, layers? And um, Jean was very concerned as, as you maybe have seen in the, in the video that we'll be talking about mostly next time. Um, about the politics of listening, Jean was very concerned with the specificity of experience. Not the ideas only, but how the ideas point to something that goes way beyond words or conceptualizations or ideas. And that opened up vast new worlds that were not um, touched with Carl Rogers way of doing therapy. Um, Carl Rogers was talking about a way of being that provides an atmosphere in which the person can grow. And this way of being the therapist's attitudes is a very important part of how the, the client can um, experience themselves and grow. That's an amazing kind of thing. And Jane Genlin, with his philosophical mind, wanted to know, well, what is that? The, the, something about the therapist's way of being brings the client uh, in touch with themselves. What does it mean to be in touch with yourself? What does it mean to grow? All of these are philosophical questions. And, um, and Jenlin um, introduced his own terms for uh, what was at the base of this in touchness with this power to have, uh, Carl Rogers talked about having the locus of evaluation in yourself, finding your own oars and direction, oars meaning in a, in a boat. Um, so Jean Genlin was, was, was looking at what that means and saying that in touchness is this flow of experiencing. And that's again, a, what do we mean by a flow of experiencing? And, and Jean spent his whole career, you know, helping us to understand it. But then he always said, you know, you can only understand it by experiencing it. Understanding and experiencing are one thing. The big disagreement that Jean had with Carl Rogers was <clears throat> Carl Rogers said that the client has to perceive, has to know intellectually that the therapist is genuine, uh, positively regarding him or her and 
empathic. And Jean said, I know that's not true because when I was uh, Carl's client, I couldn't imagine how this uh, professional middle-class uh, American born person could understand me, this strange, now I don't remember what he said. Maybe one of you will, this strange creature that I am, he said in something, but he had a word for it, but it was this, the feeling of how could he understand me? I'm so different than him. And yet, what Jean was saying is underneath in this experiencing, he experienced Carl's empathy. Jean talked about how everything wasn't about what you think or perceive, but what you know, feel in the body, in the implicit and introduce the whole dimension of implicit. Before people talked about implicit, people would talk about uh, what, you, what you think, what you know, your behavior, your characteristics, your personality, which was very um, thingified, reified. Um, and then, 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 uh, Freud was was so revolutionary in saying, well, there's this whole big unconscious that motivates us. And that was a huge uh, explosion. Uh, but the implicit is not the unconscious. The implicit that Jean was talking about is having a sense of something, an inkling of it, a feel of it. And Jean talked about how he was different already when he would climb the stairs before he opened the door of Carl Rogers' office when he was a client. He was already changed because he was breathing this air inside himself of being with Carl Rogers. And even though he didn't think that Carl Rogers understood him, he could feel understood. And we know this as therapists, right? Our clients may say, you don't care about me. You only want my money. Um, you go on vacation just to have a break from um, dealing with me or something like that. And they think that this way and, and maybe this way, but there's some way down here that feels that it's worth telling you that because you do care. Uh, and, they're, and they're betting on your caring or something. So it's that implicit level that Jean introduced. 